In this video, I'm going to demonstrate why 0 factorial equals 1. So if you've seen factorials before, you've probably seen this strange result that 0 factorial equals 1. If you've not seen factorials before, then let's start by having a little look at what factorials are. So a factorial in math is basically an exclamation mark, and it tells us to do this. So if you had, for example, 4 factorial, that factorial, that exclamation mark, tells us to multiply 4 to all the numbers smaller than 4. So 4 factorial is basically 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and then if you wish you can total that up, so that's 12, 24 times 1 is 24. Let's just carry on with this um, to see some more examples. So 3 factorial then would obviously just be 3 times 2 times 1, so 3 times 2 times 1 gives us 6. And there are a bunch of different areas in mathematics where it becomes convenient to use the factorial notation because these sorts of calculations come up regularly. So rather than having to write this all out every time, you can just use this more compact notation. In fact, it pops up in some surprisingly, just surprising areas actually. So you'll probably see factorials at some point. Um, they come up, for example, in probability and a thing called combinatorics. So let's have a look at 2 factorial just to keep this pattern going. So obviously that's going to be just 2 times 1, which gives us 2. And then 1 factorial, well 1 factorial is just 1, basically. It goes straight to 1, and there's nothing really else to do there. So these all kind of make sense. The thing that doesn't make so much sense is that 0 factorial also equals 1. So 0 factorial, which, you know, by definition is multiplying to all the numbers smaller than it, although is there anything smaller than 0 for sticking in the whole numbers, um, this also comes out to be 1. So this is one that's a little bit weird, and I'm just going to show a quick demonstration of where, or one of the ways that we can show where this result comes from. So let's just backtrack and think about what a factorial is. Well, a factorial, like we can see here, is telling us to multiply to all of the numbers smaller than the factorial number, but also going all the way down to 1. So if we generalize and think about n factorial, so n factorial says take n and multiply it to all the numbers smaller than n. Now we don't know what n is, n could be any number, but the next number to multiply that to would be 1 smaller than n, because if n was 4, then n minus 1 would be 3, so it's 1 smaller. And then we're going to multiply that to the 1 smaller than that, which is n minus 2. And then we're just going to carry on that pattern, and it would be times n minus 3, and that goes all the way down, blah, 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 depending on how big your n value is, that would dictate how many numbers you've got, and that's going to go all the way down to sort of 3, um, let me just put multiply signs back in here just to be consistent, 3 times 2 uh, times 1. So just generalizing these concrete examples we looked at here to this more general n scenario. If you look at this expression and you take away the n, then what have we got left? Well, we've got n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 all the way down to 1. So that is also a factorial expression, isn't it? In the same way that if you knocked off the 4 here, you're left with 3 times 2 times 1, which is 3 factorial. Or if you knocked off the 3 here, you've got 2 times 1, which is 2 factorial. So this part here, not including the n, but all the stuff after the n, that is essentially just then n minus 1 factorial. So in other words, n factorial, what we started with, is equal to n times n minus 1 factorial. So this gives us a little formula, essentially, or an identity, you might call it. Uh, an identity is kind of like a formula, and it allows us, therefore, to choose any n value that we want. Now, for our result, which is to work with 0 factorial, it's going to be convenient to let n equal 1. So let's just do that. Remember, in this sort of identity expression, you can let your n value be anything you want. So let's let our n equal 1. Okay, so that gives us on the left-hand side uh, n factorial. When I say that n could be anything that you want, by the way, we are going to stick here with uh, positive numbers. Uh, negative numbers applied to factorials brings up a whole other set of questions, but let's just stick with positive numbers. So we're going to put a 1 in here, so that sorry, should be a 1 factorial. So we've got 1 factorial equals 1. All the n's are becoming 1's times 1 minus 1 factorial. 1 factorial is, we already know, just 1. So on the left-hand side here, we just get 1. That is equal to 1 times 1 minus 1, which is 0 factorial. This is 0. Probably don't even need the bracket anymore. Let's just take that out. 
So that is just going to become 0 factorial. But if you look at what we've got here, we've got 1 equals 1 times something. Well, 1 can only be equal to 1 times 1. So the only thing that this can be is 1. So that tells us basically, in conclusion, that 0 factorial has to equal 1 to satisfy this equation. So it seems really weird, but that's one of the ways we can prove it. And the weird thing to me is that both of these should be 1. You know, 1 factorial and 0 factorial equal in the same thing. That doesn't happen often with numbers. Numbers are different. 5 is 5, 6 is 6, but 0 factorial and 1 factorial both equal 1. That's how you show it.